Hi, in this video we will learn the relationship between distance time graph, velocity time graph and acceleration time graph. As a practice, I would like you to describe the motion according to the motion graphs that you have here for each time segment. So when you are trying to describe it, you need to specify the time, which for example from 0 seconds to this I believe uh, is maybe 4 seconds or from 4 seconds to 7 seconds or from 7 seconds to I guess this is 23 and this is maybe 27 so for each time segment uh, you can describe this object's motion and usually when we say describe the motion uh, you will have to describe its velocity most of the time so I would like you to try first pause the video and we'll discuss our answers 2000 years later all right, so let's check the answer. For the first segment, that is 0 seconds to 4 seconds, the object moves forward with an increasing velocity. The reason why you know it is increasing velocity is because when you look at the y value of the velocity time graph, right, in this section, it's increasing in y value, not the slope, but the y value got increasing. And if you look at the distance time graph, you can see it's increasing with an increasing rate so you know these two things match together so that's why it's increasing velocity similarly for four seconds to seven seconds we can see that the object will move forward with a constant velocity because you can see the velocity remain the same value here this probably is 15 meter per second and also you can see the slope of the distant time graph in this portion is maintaining the same. I mean, it might be a bit hard, but if you try to put a ruler onto your paper, then you find it's literally a straight line within that portion. Next, when you talk about seven seconds to 15 seconds, here I would like to separate uh, this even more because obviously um, this is very special. When you are at 15 seconds, the velocity is zero. So I should break this down into two. So from 7 seconds to 15 seconds, uh, the object is still moving forward. The reason why I know it's moving forward is because as long as this is increasing in po position, then it's moving forward. Later on, uh, if you try to see my answers, uh, 15 to 23, I will start to say it moved backward because uh, you can see the position start to drop, all right, going backward, in other words. So... Um, Back to, well, let, let's talk about 7 to 15 first, all right? The answer is decreasing velocity. And that is something to do with, again, the y value of this. So you see the velocity actually is decreasing. But then, again, you are still going forward, but just going slower and slower and slower. You can also tell by looking at the slope, all right, at this point, right? Because at the beginning, it's kind of steep, and later on, not as steep, and here, the slope is basically zero and so uh, oh actually in fact you can add one more thing right you can say like what we did in the previous video at this moment like literally just one very short moment at 15 seconds uh, it is again something called momentarily at rest all right so again if you can somehow freeze that moment uh, the object is like uh, not moving at all so for 15 to 23 seconds, again, uh, it will be start moving backward. And you can also see the velocity is going more and more negative. And that's why if you try to check the slope here, it was zero, start to be a bit more negative and even more negative later on. So that's why it is uh, with a increasing velocity. And next part which is 23 to 27 which is here and here once again you can see the velocity get back to zero so uh, that is to say it will start to have the speed or velocity to be decreasing also so you may be wondering hey if i try to check the acceleration the acceleration is positive so how come it's decreasing in velocity then you have to uh, think about the acceleration here, when we are talking about positive, then this is talking about forward, right? But then our motion right now 
is going backward. So if you have a forward acceleration when you are going backward, then that means it is a deceleration because it's going in the opposite direction. So um, well, this is something like you can imagine. Uh, I don't know whether this is a good metaphor, but imagine that you have a car. All right, this is the best I can draw for a car. The car is going forward, all right, with a certain velocity, and then somehow you got a rope, all right, and you try to pull it back. You, you try to pull it back, and so the car won't stop, of course. I mean, because of you, but the car will kind of slow down. So this could be somewhat like an idea. Uh, for you to, to think um, and so it will slow down but maybe take some time for it to slow down and also reach to zero and lastly uh, what you can see from 27 to 30 the last segment here uh, in terms of VT graph velocity time graph it is zero literally so when velocity equals zero that means it is literally not moving and that is also aligned with what we see on the position time graph which means its position did not change as well. So uh, that's why you can say it stay stationary. That's one way of saying it. Or if you don't like to spell such a long word, you can just say at rest. And now it is time for me to teach another super duper skills in physics. Think about this in general. Let's say you know the relationship between X and Y on the graph, and this is shown here. And you can always find and calculate its gradient, that means the slope mathematically, and which the equation will be delta y over delta x, which you may call rise over run. More precisely, you may be taking up two points and their coordinate and calculate by y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Uh, you can swap one or two, it doesn't really matter. In physics, let's say right now y will be the velocity and x will be the time. Think about this. Then what you'll be doing is that when you try to find delta y over delta x, then you'll be like finding out delta v over delta t, right? And if you try to relate this to your physics knowledge, then you surely will know the gradient. Again, uh, it could be the slope you may call would be the acceleration because acceleration equals to delta v over delta t remember this is based on your physics knowledge so without that you cannot deduce this will be acceleration at the same time uh, you should also know the area to be certain physical meaning and how you can deduce it would be uh, think about how you can calculate the area well of course you may say it depends on the shape uh, so let's say it is a triangle uh, or a rectangle, you probably would do the y multiply with x, right? If this is triangle, then you maybe divide by two. Doesn't really matter whether or not it is triangle, rectangle, or whatsoever. The most important thing is, in terms of the physical dimension, it is y times x here. And once again, if we have velocity and time, what would that be when you multiply these two together? That would be displacement okay so that means you can apply this idea to anything you have in future when you have a graph in the physics that means uh, whenever you want to know the physical meaning of the slope then what you would need to do is look at its y look at its x what is it representing in the physical quantities and whatever the slope it is it will be meaning delta y over delta x and as for the area, whatever shape it is, uh, you can interpret it as y multiplied with x. Again, it's not the exact equation for calculating area, but this is a way you interpret the physical meaning of it. If you understand what I mean, then you should be able to do this table to deduce the physical meaning of the area and the slope of each of the graph. Master, moving stones around is one thing. This is totally different. No, no different, only different in your mind. Please go and try, pause the video, and I will explain the answers with you. A few moments later. Let's start with the easiest first, and that is the velocity time graph. For the velocity time graph with its slope, 
then it will be v over t and well like we said that is acceleration a so um, if you refer back to our motion graph that we have then you can always see whenever you talk about the slope of this then this will be reflected with the acceleration right not the slope of the acceleration but the value of acceleration so we can see this one is positive and that's why the value of acceleration is positive similarly if you have this to be zero as a slope for velocity time graph then the value of acceleration is also going to be zero and lastly if you have a negative slope in the VT graph then the acceleration will also be negative accordingly all right this will be the exact value of it back to the table for the physical meaning of the area of the velocity time graph like we said then that would be the displacement okay and if you refer back to the diagram once again then what you can imagine is the area under this triangle if you try to calculate it with again the different formula for calculating area this one will be triangle then the total sum of this area will be the change of the distance or displacement here so that will make it to be 40 so I, I'm pretty sure that if this graph is correct then the area of this will be 40 similarly then I can also find the area of this rectangle then that will be the extra distance that it travels so probably this is also 40 all right just coincidentally 80 and 40 so yeah uh, if you minus it then you get 40 okay so um, when you have a negative or like the area that is under the x-axis that means you're going backward all right so in physics well we don't we probably we don't call it negative area because that may sound a bit range strange but then uh, this means if you have it under the x-axis that means it go backward so that's why uh, earlier we said uh, when we have this initial position going to this position then you can see the x actually got decreased because this area is negative okay so this is the easiest one and next let's talk about displacement time graph so for the gradient once again it will be delta x if we refer that as displacement some people may use uh, s both are fine over delta t and according to what you learn in physics that's gonna be velocity so again if you look at the slope of the graph that we showed you then you can always interpret its velocity by looking at its slope so like I said in the beginning at the beginning here uh, this slope of this distant time graph is kind of like zero so that's why you start from zero in the velocity and later on you get steeper and here is it's a constant so that's why you get much steeper I mean not steeper but greater number and also maintaining this constant number to be like 15 later on when you look at say this point the slope is zero at 15 seconds and that's why the velocity at 15 seconds is zero and when you have the slope to be negative this is when you have the value of the velocity to be negative as well okay so back to our table here you may be wondering so what is the area represented by the displacement time graph then because when you try to think about that then that means you are trying to multiply s with t if you think about in terms of dimension that means this is meter second have you learned about anything that is related to this the answer is no right this is actually meaningless so you can put across or you can put down it is uh, physically meaningless okay it doesn't represent anything at all lastly for the acceleration time graph then for its area let's talk about area first for its area is something that you should know because when you try to find the area that will be similar to saying acceleration multiplied the time if you refer back to one of the equation that you learned which is a equals to v minus u over t 
then you can rearrange the equation and find out this would mean delta v so that means it is the change of velocity lastly if you think this box is the same as this one which is meaningless then you are wrong because this one is actually meaningful in physics and we do give them a name okay so if you try to think about again with the general skills that you learn about the super duper skills that you learned then it will mean delta a over delta t if you try to refer to our textbook or anything that you learned before i'm pretty sure that you have never learned about that right but then if you try to look at this then that means in words if you remember what i said in the earlier video delta over delta t means rate change of something right and that something now is the acceleration so if you try to think about this then it is what it is right rate change of acceleration we do actually have a name for rate change of acceleration and probably to your surprise we call it jerk yes i'm not even kidding if you try to google it well you you don't find it because if you just search jerk then that means how you interpret earlier you have to type jerk physics and then you'll be able to find the relevant website uh, including wikipedia and yeah that is rate change of acceleration and this is official in fact if you try to look further then you can also see there is rate change of jerk as well that is called snap and rate change of snap is called crackle and rate change of crackle is with the name of pop right i actually have no idea uh what is the purpose of this well for jerk actually i know it's something to do with uh, the machinery actually so if you study engineering in university then this is something that you will care about so maybe next time other than saying you're such a you can also say you are such a acceleration over time there you have it so now you can understand the relationship between the graphs and that means you can somehow translate the graph from one to another that means if i give you the velocity time graph you can somehow create the corresponding displacement time graph and acceleration time graph and you can also apply this general idea and skills in physics to other topics in the future i hope you enjoy learning with me if you do so please thumbs up and subscribe to my channel i'll see you again in the next video bye